my people, how you doing? Hope you're having a fantastic damn day. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you how you can replicate Aston Villa's back five system in the game FC24. Of course, Unai Emery and Villa have been very good at being able to shape shift their way through the course of the season so far using a variety of different formations. And if you haven't seen the 442 or the 4411 systems, please, I'll link them at the end of this video. Go and check them out. They are fantastic to use in your game, of course. But we're here for the back three system. So let's hop on straight into the video. So, of course, there's no real changes to it. I haven't really moved anybody out of position. I've more or less just brought the, the wider wing backs slightly high up the field getting them a bit more involved in the attacking out there which is more or less what they're going to be there for using to try and you know generate a lot of space and pace down those left or right hand side flanks um so again it's a 5-3-2 holding um system and formation it's one goalkeeper three sense backs two wing backs one dm two central midfielders and then of course two strikers so for the tactics going forward with this system it's very similar to the 4-4-1-1 I will say that the tactics in general have a very, you know, significant and more or less the same set of core values as what the previous sets of instructions and those set of tactics do have. So for the tactical vision, Gagan pressing is implemented. The front two, as well as the midfield three, will look to aggressively press the opposition, making sure that they're, you know, very uneasy on the ball. They have no time or space to try and make decisions and it in turn forces a lot of errors and ways that you can more or less look to try and win that ball back and then aggressively press pipe the field and turn it into a transition attack. As for the defensive style, of course, it goes hand in hand with the Gagan pressing system. Pressing after position loss, like I say, you're trying to win that ball back very aggressively and as quickly as can be when you do turn the ball over itself. As for the team width, it's set to 25, just like the previous set of instructions, of course, a very narrow width. Of course, you do have a back five this time. so. Even though you're, you're very compact centrally, you also have your wing backs that will help out in those wider areas of the field, preventing or trying to prevent at least crosses being fired into the box. As for the depth, it's set to 80, of course, with the 4411, it was set to 85, so I've gone with a slightly lesser high line, but it's still nonetheless a high line to go with. Um, of course, you do have three center backs that are all fairly decent. Um, I mean, Pau Torres does struggle for pace, but you've got the likes of Conser as well as Diego Carlos, who do have very you know, good recovery pace on them. And of course, you do have your wing backs that can definitely look to track back um, and try and beat the, the opposition players when they try and get in behind. So you don't need to worry too much about that. But again, you are looking to try and progress the ball high up the field and of course, try and pin the opposition and try and keep them in their own half in certain moments. And of course, with the hard line, it does add to the offensive side of things. And speaking of which, the offensive side of things, the builder player sets fast build up as well as direct passing, of course, looking to get your runners in behind. DRB as well as Watkins in this case, of course, as your front two. But again, you'll you'll also try and get your midfielders making those runs in behind in certain moments. The likes of John McGinn, the likes of um, Jacob Ramsey, of course, they can also look to try and be a bit more involved in the attacking outlet sometimes. But again, it's still very similar to what we were trying to replicate with the 4411. Um, like I said, the core values that Emery is trying to implement will be seen throughout the entirety of all these tactics put together. Um, and you don't really want to change too much about that. As for the width, it is 70 offering up a bit more space in between the lines, especially in the central areas of the field. Of course, you have three very creative but structurally sound midfielders that are looking to try and generate um, a bit more ball movements in between the lines and opening up a bit more space for your forwards to try and run into and as well as trying to exploit in certain moments. And then, of course, you do have your wing backs that you will look to try and work the ball into those wider channels. Um, and in turn, more or less try and draw the opposition into those wide areas as well. Again, opening up a bit more space for your midfield as well as your attackers to try and work with. As for the players in the box, however, slightly less. Of course, with the, the previous instructions, it was a lot higher, set to like eight and seven and so on. But this is set to a balance five, allowing for at least three players to make those attacking runs into the box and allowing for at least three players to be in and around the box to try and rotate the ball and try and work it for a better offensive opportunity. As for corners and free kicks, as for always, set to four. Now, starting off with the instructions at the back with the goalkeeper, of course, Martinez set to come for crosses and be a sweeping keeper. You are playing a high line. It is required for a modern day goalkeeper to be able to make those runs off of it, as well as claim that ball back and rotate it back into play. Um, and then, of course, it goes hand in hand with it. Be very aggressive, come for crosses, claim those aerial balls, alleviate the stress on the back line when, obviously, the, the opportunity arrives. When those crosses are whipped into the box, you need your goalkeeper to claim those balls. And Martinez is very good at doing so. 
I have mentioned this before as well um, in, in the, the previous instructions. I, I do feel bad though because it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but like I say, the core values as well as the instructions and the tactical approach, they don't really change too much. Um, moving on into the back line though, Concert and Diego Carlos, they're set to their base set of instructions, right? Whereas the likes of Pau Torres, I've set him to overlap and this will obviously get him a bit higher up the field, offering him up into those wider spaces looking to try and support the likes of Dinier in certain moments. And also, he is going to be more of the ball playing centre back of the back three, slash back five, um, allowing him to be able to get on the ball and then progress it forward. And then, of course, like I said, these other two centre backs, they'll look to more or less be structurally sound, stay in position and look to try and cover if Torres does get forward. As for your two wing backs now, of course, Dinia and Cash, or it doesn't really matter who your wing backs are, they'll still have the same roles going forward. Um, so both your right and your left full backs or wing backs are set to the same set of instructions. So they will be instructed to join the attack, obviously, like I said earlier, looking to try and offer um, a bit more of an attacking outlet on those wider flanks as well as making the run type of overlap, obviously looking to try and hold the width down either the left or the right hand side of the field. And then of course, for the defensive position, it is set to stick to position. As you can see for the likes of Matty Cash, he's got the same set of instructions as well. Now moving on into the midfield, we've got the likes of Kamara sitting at the base of that um, midfield three, you could say. Um, he's set to cut past lanes and stay back while attacking. The interceptions are set to normally, you don't really want him chasing too much. He's going to just sit in front of the back line, shield it very effectively, and break up the play when required. And then the positioning freedom is set to stick to position and then cover the center. So the defense positioning, like I said, sits in front of the back three, protect them, maybe even sometimes slot into that third center back role, especially when Torres does get forward. But of course, it's very hard to because EA have removed the ability for you to potentially drop your DM into the back line when needed. So it's very irritating, but nonetheless, the stay back approach will also try and help cover the likes of Torres in certain moments. On to the likes of John McGinn now. He will be a bit more of the advanced midfielder in certain moments. Of course, he's very well known for his aggressive defensive work rate, but he's also well known for getting into the box, attacking late on, making those runs, getting on the end of crosses or cutbacks and scoring the goals. So you want him to still replicate that in this role going forward. So he will be told to get forward. The support on crosses is set to balance. So sometimes operating in the box, other times looking to be on the edge of the area, looking to try and facilitate and rotate play. Aggressive inceptions though are set to be on it, and that more or less does replicate his intense work rate that he looks to try and put in, in every single game. As well as the defense positioning is set to cover the center, looking to try and clog the central areas of the field. You will see the likes of Douglas Luiz is set to the same. Um, in fact, Douglas Luiz is, is, has a very similar role, but slightly less um, of an attacking threat. And then of course the positioning freedom, very structurally sound, this entire formation you could say making sure that there's not too much free roaming or players stepping out of position. It's got to have a structured approach to it for it to be a successful set of tactics and formation. Now, onto the likes of Douglas Luiz. Um, again, a very similar role, you could say. Um, cover the center, stick to position, and then of course aggressive interceptions, but the main changes are obviously here. So for the support uh, on the attacking side of things, he won't always look just to get forward. He will look to sometimes drop a bit deeper, help support the likes of Kamara, which of course McGinn will do more times than not, but he'll do more of the attacking outfit. So sometimes Douglas Ruiz can obviously offer up a bit more on the offensive side of things, other times looking just to be a bit more of that balanced and box-to-box -box, um, type player. And then of course, for the support on crosses, stand the edge, whereas the likes of McGinn, he will look to sometimes get break into the box. So again, it does, it does offer up a, a very similar role, but again, a, a less attacking side of it. And then finally, we've got our two strikers, the likes of Diaby and Watkins. We'll start off with Diaby, of course. He is here to drift wide, of course, trying to get that right wing approach out of him, drifting into that wider right channel, drawing out the opposition players, center backs or full backs in certain moments, into those wider areas, opening up a bit more space for the likes of McGinn to try and operate in. Of course, the get in behind approach is still essential for this. For most of these tactics and structures and the formations and whatnot, you want your front players making sure that they are making those runs in behind, looking to exploit the opposition or try and open up a bit more space between the lines for the teammates of well Aston Villa of course. Um, aggressive interceptions though are set to be on for him looking to try and press the opposition back line as well as the goalkeeper and whatnot and then of course the basic defensive support is set to be on for him sometimes having the ability to drop off a bit more drop off the back line suck players out of position or potentially stay forward and be a bit more of the out there ball with the likes of Ollie Watkins. 
And speaking of which, Watkins, he's got a similar role again, but this time he does have a bit more of the authority to stay a bit more central. So the support runs is set to balance having the ability to drift wide or potentially having the ability to stay a bit more central, latching onto those uh, free kick opportunities or crosses that are whipped into the central areas of the box. Getting in behind though, just like DRB looking to try and exploit the opposition with his pace in behind. Aggressive interception still set to be on for him, as well as the ability for him to stay forward. Like I always say, especially with systems like this, you want at least one of your strikers to stay forward. It does allow them to be a bit more of the outlet ball. And there you have it, people. That is my version of Unai Emery's back five system in the game FC24. Of course, it is for Aston Villa. You can probably adapt this to more as any team you would like. And that's one thing I have noticed about Emery. He's very much able to adapt his systems to the players that he has. He's very capable of working with what he's got, making the best out of it. So you know what? When life gives you lemons, Unai Emery makes you the best goddamn lemonade you can possibly have. So, of course, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please, it's extra content for you. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you are new. We are almost at 3,000 subscribers, so it would mean the world to me if you are not subscribed to hit that big red button. And, of course, until the next time, I hope you have a damn great day. I'm out.